My name is Jeremy Frankel, originally from London. I now live in Northern California and I'm the president of the San Francisco Bay Area Jewish Genealogical Society. And my name is Victoria Fish and I'm, uh, I grew up in New York City and I live in Northern California now and I'm the president of the Sacramento Jewish Genealogical Society. And we're actually partners, we're both professional genealogists as well. Both of us, and I think many people, there's a mystery in your family that spurs you on to want to figure something out. Um, in my own family, my mother's brother went to fight in the Spanish Civil War and never came back. And my mother was convinced that he had not died overseas, and that's what spurred me on. For me, it was almost exactly 30 years ago this year that my grandfather one day said to me, did you know that my brother was married to someone else and they had a daughter? And that's what started me off. And it's taken me 30 years. And tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be having the reunion with my Nigerian Jewish family in London. Yes. <laughs> if you're starting, because so much has been done, because we are in the 21st century and so much is online, what I always tell people to do is don't reinvent your family tree. Go on Ancestry, go on sites that have trees already established and see if you can find other people who are searching collateral branches that may be related to you before you start digging away at the records. But we do also really encourage people to do your own research, to get primary documents and to be very careful not to necessarily accept what, what's out there. From literally waking up in the morning to night time, that's all we're ever talking about, programming, running the organization. We share issues and um, able to help each other solve problems uh, related to running the societies. We are actually probably on the Ancestry website at a minimum of 10 hours a day. Um, Where's my family from? Well, <laughs> actually, yes. Very often they'll say, oh, they were from Poland, Russia, which is rather vague. But um, quite often people will come to us and they really do want to go back to the old country. Because with Jewish families, um, most of them who live in the United States have been there perhaps for the bulk of them, three generations, perhaps. And before that, they were from somewhere in Eastern Europe or Russia. Um, they often come to us with various stories which we either have to prove or disprove. Or dispel. <laughs> yeah. The most common, of course, being that my, na my grandfather's name was changed at Ellis Island, which is the largest genealogical myth. Um, many people will say that their ancestor was in line when they got off the boat, when they disembarked, and that the fellow who was uh, checking them in decided that their name was too difficult to pronounce and gave them another name. And this is a myth that's been permeated tremendously and we have to gently explain that their name was on some kind of a travel document when they left their uh, port of departure and that when they arrived that name was written down. Now what we have found also though is that it was very common for people whose names were um, complicated phonetically, were for a foreign language, to just adapt, uh, adopt an anglicized or an Americanized name in this country, which was very often not formally or legally changed, but was used throughout generations. That's true. Okay, excellent question. Yeah. We are very methodical and we encourage people who are researching their own families to be very careful and to work incrementally backwards to make sure that by establishing family groups that you can be assured that you are with the right family because not only are these Jewish names complex, very often everybody has the same first name. Um, in terms of last names, we've developed some methodologies for finding some of these complicated names because very often they've been mangled in the transcription. Also, you might you have to bear in mind that when they came over, they didn't have Anglo, Anglicized names. And so we have to think about what are their names now and what could they have been as Hebrew names, Yiddish names, and how they would have been written down incorrectly or correctly on a passenger manifest. 
Uh, yeah, so it was very exciting working on the Kelsey Grammar episode last year. Uh, it involved both working on my computer as well as going out to uh, a particular library because um, one of his families were farming in the what we call the Delta region of Northern California and the only newspaper of record was in a library and a very, very poor microfilm. And so I spent many, many hours poring over many issues looking for evidence of their name and uh, their existence in the region. And then there was a map. There was a very tiny historical museum in this town with a very large land grant map. And you, didn't you accidentally... Uh, well, the records ne never really stated exactly where this family were living other than outside or near this town. And I happened to be in this museum looking at all these things on the wall and I came across a map of the Delta and it just happened to have the name Geddes Island. So I, I, by happenstance and the typical way in which these things happen in genealogy, I was able to uh, locate exactly where this family were farming it, and which helped a lot in the MOOC program. I'm actually the Northern California editor of a, a journal that's been published for 45 years called Western States Jewish History. And my focus in the last eight years or so have been uh, researching the influx of Jews to the California Gold Rush. And we also happen to be members of a commission that's preserving seven Jewish cemeteries of the Gold Rush era up in the uh, yes. mountains. So um, it's kind of like weird and interesting to say I actually own seven cemeteries. <laughs> now we also actually did research for another Who Do You Think You Are uh, a segment about Helen Hunt, who did have family who was in the California Gold Rush. Jeremy's society has been systematically um, One of my recording. planks as being president of the JGS of San Francisco was Sorry. to um, make sure that all the Jewish cemeteries in the San Francisco Bay Area have been indexed and to, to date we've done over 40,000 names. We recently uh, received the uh, index cards for the San Jose Jewish Cemetery and they're also working on the cemeteries in Oakland as well. Well, we ran into an algorithm problem, which apparently no one was aware of. Um, we had 175 family trees. Which incorporated many family trees within those, actually. And what we discovered was when you find a record and you want to attach it to a person, you first have to um, get the tree up. Well, the algorithm only allows you to get the first 125 trees. So if you're searching between 125, 126 and 175, that tree will never come up and you can never attach the record. So because of that algorithm problem, they had to give us another uh, account. Basically, you broke ancestry. We, we, we maxed yeah. out the uh, ancestry, it. yeah. You yeah, broke yeah. the bank. <laughs>